Hey guys, this is Tim with Little Curl Gunworks. Uh, today we're doing a video on a new product we created. We're calling it the DGA or Death Grip Adapter. It's for it's a part that we um, created that you can use to retrofit your Death Grip tripod and make it into a ball mount, which um, it still utilizes the Death Grip clamp, but a lot of guys have expressed frustration with um, the existing mechanism that is on the tripod where when you loosen up this tension knob to where it pans you can like feel the the dimples in the in the pan down here where the bearings are it's not smooth it's kind of like it's not gravelly but it's a little bit clunky and it's not smooth so if you're panning if you're taking a, a shot on a moving target you can feel like the bumps and those are going to show up on your crosshairs it's just not fluid and the same with the um, the tilt feature when you loosen that knob, it's this is a little smoother, but this knob is a little bit on the clunky side where it's got a, a hard stop on both sides and um, it can be a little bit tricky to use. So um, our owner and uh, amateur cameraman at the moment, <laughs> Dale Hegstrom, he's our, our gunsmith as well. He was using this out in the field shooting prairie dogs and coyotes and deer hunting and um, over a period of time just got really frustrated with uh, how it works where you know, this is an excellent tripod. It's really well built um, The death grip feature is really well made. It does a great job of holding onto the rifle But the full execution of being able to move this thing um, Could have been done a little bit better and we'll go through the reasons why that is and then show you our uh, retrofit kit and the advantages of that so <clears throat> any of you that have shot in the field before when you have used this tripod and you get the rifle clamped in there, well, when you're in the field, the ground's not level. So you get this thing clamped in there and we'll just simulate the ground not being level. Well, what happens? Your crosshairs aren't level. So now you're trying to take a shot at long range or even short range and the gun's cockeyed. So you either have to constantly play with these leg adjustments trying to get your tripod level, which isn't expedient in a field situation. So because that is too time consuming, what guys end up doing is they'll loosen the death grip and then try to like cheat the rifle so that it's level. Well, now you're kind of defeating the purpose of this because it's not holding on to the rifle for you. And even if you clamp it back in there at that now level angle where your crosshairs are level, as soon as you turn that, it's not level anymore. Um, so we wanted to come up with something that would allow you to, um, in the field on uneven ground, get the rifle level in an expedient manner. So you can hurry up, get it set and take your shot. And you're not fiddling around with the mechanism, which is not why you're in the field. You're in the field to hunt or shoot. You're not there to play with your equipment while the animal gets away. So, um, we'll go through what way the parts that we came up with and show you how to remove the existing parts and then install the new ones. So we'll get this level back out. All right, so you have your death grip. Um, the installation of the new parts is, is actually fairly straightforward. You only need a few hand tools to do it. So we recommend having a dead blow or a rubber hammer um, a rubber mallet just for a couple reasons when you go to take this old mechanism out Sometimes you have to kind of tap on it to get it to get it loose to get it to come out and Also, we've found that this center section is cast aluminum and if anybody knows anything about cast It's not perfectly your dimensions aren't perfect every time There's there's a tolerance in there and we try to make our part that goes in here a snug fit so there's not a lot of slop and in, in that, sometimes we found that our center column, you have to kind of tap it into place as well. So we'll, we'll show you that when we get to that part. Um, so you need a dead blower, rubber, rubber hammer, some kind of 9 16 wrench. It doesn't need to be a ratchet. It can just be a regular wrench, but you need a 9 16 wrench. And then a 3 16 Allen key. We're, we're going to cheat and use a drill just to save time on the video and make the video shorter. You can use either one, but uh, just a 3 16 Allen is what you need. So this is how the product's going to show up to you. 
um, in box. We'll kind of do a, a primitive unboxing. Um, this will be in bubble wrap. The, the ball mount will be in bubble wrap. Um, we've already had it out of the box once. So it comes with an art size QB40 uh, 360 ball mount. This is a really well-made ball mount. You know, it doesn't matter whose ball mount you get virtually. They're, they're virtually all made overseas. Um, but Art Size makes a really good ball mount. Uh, there's another brand called Innerel. They make a really good one too. And this is a, a, a QB40, and I think the rating on it is 20 kilos. So it's rated for 44 pounds. Um, it does have the ability to uh, loosen this screw and pan the whole thing, or you can tighten that down and just get your pan done with the ball mount. We'll show you that once it's installed. Um, okay, so it comes with the ball mount, and then it comes with uh, two different Arca plates. It comes with an extra Arca plate and the one that's in the unit. And these, although you don't need them for the death grip, it's nice to have them because you can mount ancillary optics. Like you could put your rangefinder on this one and your spotting scope on this one or a digital camera or whatever you have that has a quarter 20 screw in the bottom and then you'll be able to use it with this mount and quickly go from death grip to optic or vice versa. Then what else is in the box are the two parts that we designed and created. One of them is the uh, center column or sleeve that will replace essentially the guts of the existing um, tripod. So this is, both of these parts are black Cerakoted 6061 aluminum, and they were built with purpose just for this product. It's not a retrofit of some other part. It's for this product. So we need that um, center section sleeve, and then we also use a very specific bolt. This is a 3 8 flanged, um, serrated flange bolt, and the serration kind of acts like a washer. So you don't need washer. You don't need Loctite to keep this from backing out. Uh, once you tighten it down, that serration is going to keep it from backing up. So we have that part, and then the other part we made is a modified Arca plate that goes into the Arca slot, just like any other Arca plate. But what's special about this is we made it specifically to fit the bottom of the death grip mount utilizing the factory screws. So you don't need any special screws. The ones that come on the death grip are, are what you need. So now we'll go through removal of the old parts and installation. Um, and this, this part is, is really fairly straightforward. So are you close enough that you can get all the detail in there, Dale? Sure. So this is the way it comes. This is just a little rubber cap that you can just pop off with a fingernail. And then there's your first 3 16 Allen screw. Uh, your Allen bolt. Again, you can use just a normal Allen wrench to get that out. Again, we're going to cheat and use the drill just in the interest of time. Okay, so we get that loose. We can set that aside. And none of these parts you're going to need to reuse. So you can keep them if you want to, but you're not going to need them. So you, this just pops off, and this is their uh, assortment of parts. It's a lot of plastic parts, some... some uh, stamp parts that they use to seal everything and then there's your bearing sleeve uh, for the panning function again you can keep this stuff but you're you're not going to need it so we'll set that aside all right once we have that out this is the, the existing center column sometimes these are tight on the cast and you need to tap this to get it out but a lot of times it'll just fall out too so we take that out now this is wide open. It's the factory aluminum cast. You don't need to do any special modifications to that. Um, the cast is a little inconsistent. We found that sometimes because it's not, um, the tolerance is relative to our part that we made, sometimes are a little tight, especially after we put this black Cerakote on there. And sometimes when you're going to install this, it might hang up and you have to tap it into place. Now, one thing you can do to, to ease installation is you can lubricate this. It doesn't need to be lubricated for function. This isn't a moving part, um, but if you wanted to give an extra layer of protection to that Cerakote and make it easier to install, um, you can hit it with any kind of lubricant. We like Ballistol. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. It's a great product. You can use it for cleaning guns, lubricating things, um, conditioning leather, wood, whatever. 
and it's non-toxic so that's why we like it because a lot of this stuff is pretty nasty stuff so you can lube that a little bit sometimes they'll drop right in sometimes you got to tap them in but once that's in uh, you don't have to do anything else with the center section of the tripod it's essentially ready to go i think this is still tight enough that we can stand this up and it won't fall out yeah okay so now that can sit there while we retrofit the death grip portion all right so this Here's your death grip in your center section, your old center section hub. You want to loosen this up so this will tilt back and forth and you can get at the screws on the bottom or the bolts on the bottom. These are 3 16 again, so you can use a normal Allen key. Again, we're going to cheat and use the drill just in the interest of time. You will need these screws again, so make sure your bolts, so make sure you keep track. Of them. And we notice these threads do have a little bit of bite on this part of the mount even. They're threaded into the cast of the death grip, but they do still make contact with this part. So you, they do have a bite all the way up. So don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you can't get it out with your fingers. Okay, so now that we have these out, we retain the four factory bolts. This part is obsolete along with these other parts that held it in place. You can keep them if you want to, you're not gonna need them. And this, the parts that we created, this uh, Death Grip Adapter Kit, DGA, we designed this to be a permanent solution. So it's not designed to be taken out. You can if you want to, like if you ever have an issue with some other part of the tripod and you have to send it back, uh, to bog for warranty work or repair or whatever it's probably good to keep this factory stuff so you can put it back to how it came from the factory before you send it in some companies are sticklers about that they say well if you modified it we're not going to cover it where you can just take this out put the old stuff back and send it in so that would be the only reason to really hang on to this um, but otherwise you're not going to need it okay so now that we have the old center section mechanism off of here we can mount our new Arca plate. So obviously we want the recesses for the heads of the uh, cap bolts to be pointed up, line holes up, and you can get these started by hand as uh, there's no bite on our plate, just on the head. So you can get them started by hand and then if you want to chase them in with a drill you can, otherwise you're your normal Allen key. Okay, and it's just that simple. So that part of it's done. Now, in order to get this all together, we have to go over mounting the ball mount. Um, so the head's done, we'll get this set up so that's straight again. Okay, now the way we recommend you do this is when you're gonna use this thing in the field, you have to think about, okay, you're gonna be shooting it, there's gonna be recoil. Well, in order for this thing to recoil in a controlled manner, that's not going to throw you off target so you can still see what's happening. You're going to want two points of contact closest to you. And this is really important because if you don't have it that way and you're shooting it, say like this or with one leg towards you, what's going to happen is when you shoot under recoil, it's going to want to kickstand and it's going to jump off whichever way the balance point is which doesn't do you any good. So you're going to want it like this so it has equal pressure on both feet and it can recoil naturally. Um, you can do it with the level closest to you. You don't necessarily have to. You can do it whichever way you want just so that two of the legs are closest to you. If you want to utilize your foam handle, like if you're right-handed, then do it this way so your left hand can be on there. Now the reason that's important and the way we make sure that you orient it that way is right here on this cast, from the factory, there's like a little, between the two legs, there's like a little, uh, almost like an indicator. They, this is a brace so that, to make this stronger, but we use this as an indicator point. And if you're right-handed, what you do then is you take your ball mount 
and then we loosen this set screw so that the base will turn and we line the base up so that the zero is on the partition of the ball mount. Then we can tighten that down. And once that's lined up, you never really need to loosen this again if you don't want to. The reason that's important is when we mount it to the tripod, we then line up the zero and the hash with this mark on the cast. So that way it's nice and straight. And the reason that's important is that when you put your bolt in, slide that up through the bottom, thread it in, I'll show you why that matters. So we line that up. Now, if you're a right-handed shooter, your right hand's gonna be on the rifle, your left hand is gonna be manipulating this. And that keeps this in a nice convenient location for your hand. Where if it was tilted, then your hand's gonna be in a weird spot and your wrist is gonna be kinda of cocked to use it. So if you line those up on zero, then your left hand can use this freely. If you're a left-handed shooter, it would be the inverse. And the only thing you do differently is you would have it on 180 and line that up. So that way your right hand, you have to reach around to the back side of it, but your right hand would be manipulating the lock for the ball versus your left hand. We're both right-handed shooters, so I'm going to put it back this way. But um, And if you like it, you know, kicked a little bit one way or the other, that's fine. It's not going to affect the way this thing functions. It's just we found that lining it up on zero uh, is convenient for us. So once you do that, line that up on zero. We put our flanged bolt in. And um, our sleeve is designed to be just below flush. And we did that on purpose so that way when we put the ball mount on there, we're, there's no slop. There can't be because we're putting a bolt on the bottom. That's going up and sucking this down tight so this will sit on the cast. And if you uh, once you torque it down, it's not going to turn and there'll be no play. So it'll be a nice solid system. And we haven't uh, dictated any particular torque specs for this. Um, just snug. You want it snug enough that you know it's not going to back out on you on its own, but you're not putting a lug nut on a car, so you don't need to get carried away. Just enough that this doesn't turn and you know it's not going to back out on you. It's a grade 3 bolt. Yeah, grade 3, 3 eighths uh, flange bolt. And that comes with it. You don't need to buy that. Um, so now this part of it's done. So we have that installed. Now it's just a matter of sliding our Arca plate in, just like you would any other Arca plate. Um, and if you want this knob on the other side, it, it doesn't matter. It's really just up to you how you do it. And also with this lever too, this is spring loaded. So you can pull that out and put it at whatever angle you like it at. Um, it doesn't matter. So to install this, you just slide it in like any other Arca and it can be however you want it. it can, you can have it with the death grip on the left or the right. It doesn't really matter. This does have a little bit of an angle to it, but it's really just a user preference thing. If I'd you, put it on the right side. Yeah, if you want it on the right side, that's fine. If you want it on the left, that's fine. Whatever whatever you like. Okay, and that's it. It's just that simple. Now we have the ability to um, move this and use it on all axes and all angles. So you can level up your crosshairs no matter how uneven or crooked the ground is. Um, one thing that's nice about this too is that you're not necessarily married to just the death grip. So we're gonna show a couple examples of what you can do with this um, now that you have the ball mount on there. So the reason this death grip is really handy is for a lot of guys that, let's say you have a, a nice pretty wood stocked rifle and you don't wanna mount any other hardware, any arca rails or anything onto it. Um, either for cosmetics or weight, or you don't want to be drilling into it. That's where this death grip comes in really handy because it'll just clamp onto the rifle. You don't have to mount any ancillary hardware to the bottom. You can just, uh, before I point this thing around too much, bolt out. It's probably not, it's not coming out on that one. Okay. Just leave it open. So the rifle is clear. <clears throat> so that way you can clamp this wherever the balance point is. You do kind of want it on the balance point just because that's going to create 
less um, leverage on the ball mechanism itself. This is a low, what's called a low profile ball mount. So the ball is really low in the center hub. And what that does is it reduces the amount of torque up on the, on the ball itself and it gets your center of gravity lower. So what that means is that there's less stress on this ball. It's gonna be less likely to fail on you if you have a really heavy gun. So now that we have this mounted in here, we have it clamped down nice and tight. It doesn't matter if it's clamped in there perfectly because, you know, perfectly level because you're gonna fix that with the ball mechanism. So if you're a right-handed shooter, you're out in the field, you can just loosen this. Now you're looking through, you're finding your target, you're panning, whatever, and you can add a little bit of tension to this if you want to, or you can have it really loose, but it gives you the ability to level your crosshairs no matter what the, the ground conditions are. Um, so if you have a rifle that you don't wanna add hardware to, you just wanna clamp it in there, this is perfect. Now, if you have a different kind of rifle, let's say you do have an ARCA plate on your rifle, whether it's an AR or a bolt gun or whatever you have. Let me grab this other one. Uh, this is Dale's Prairie Dog gun. And he has, um, it's a chassis gun, so it kind of looks like an AR, but it'll, it'll play as an AR for now. So if you have an ARCA plate on your gun already, you can just loosen this tension screw, take your death grip out. Now we have an available ARCA slot for an ARCA that might be on your foreign, on your uh, handguard, whether it's a full length or a piece or whatever, as long as it's an ARCA rail, it'll slide right in there. You don't need any special retrofit or, you know, any special parts. It can just be any ARCA plate. Now we have the ability to directly mount our rifle. We're out in the field. We need to get level and make a shot. It's perfect for that. Or if we're not ready to make a shot, we can just loosen this, slide it out. And with the, the ancillary plates that come with it, you can slide in your optic or your spotting scope or your range finder or whatever you have. Um, and then the third example we have for a rifle is a really heavy gun. So again, this uh, ball mount is rated for 44 pounds, 20 kilos. This is my uh, Prairie Dog rifle that we built. It's just over 20 pounds and it has an ARCA rail the full length of the forend. So we found that you know, trying to get it at the balance point where the rifle is kind of balanced up there on its own before you tighten it down, that's going to create the least amount of torque on the ball. So now, even with a, you know, a 20 pound gun, which is heavier than most guys are going to have, it's easy to operate, easy to pan, tilt, get your angles correct, make sure you're level to take your shot. Um, so your impact goes where you expect it to at distance. So this is a product that, um, Dale's been using this tripod for years and uh, got frustrated with it and a couple years ago designed these parts and he's been kind of tweaking them a little bit. But he's really field tested this thing a lot for prairie dogs and uh, coyotes, deer hunting, whatever. Um, and that's another thing we want to talk about. So this has multiple uses. Um, the tripod itself, but this, this uh, ball mount uh, retrofit kit. So... He used to be a table shooter for prairie dogs, and if anybody shot prairie dogs, you, they're small targets and they move. So you want to be as stable as you can get. And uh, he found that after retrofitting this to the to what you see here, he found that a bench didn't really offer much over this anymore in the way of stability. You know, it might be a little more stable, um, but again, you're out in the field with uneven ground. So if you have multiple legs that you're trying to get on the ground, sometimes that's not that easy to do and your table can be rocky. Uh, and plus they're, it's a lot to move, it, they're heavy, they're clunky, they take up a lot of space. Where he found the possible little bit of added stability that it offers didn't outweigh the portability, modularity, and the lightweight um, of, you know, lightweightness of this. So um, for, for prairie dog hunting, for coyote hunting, you know, if, if you guys are, any of you guys are coyote hunters, you know that laying prone isn't all that practical. You need to be able to move because they really like to move a lot. So uh, you need to be able to, to pan and tilt and move fast. And um, also when you're in the field, sometimes there's long grass, whatever. This allows you to get up above the grass and see what's going on. Or if you have you know rolling terrain, it helps to, to be elevated. So 
Uh, this is really useful for field use. And then also the third application, prairie dogs, coyotes, the third one would be uh, if you're a blind hunter. So if you, if you deer hunt out of a blind, whether it's a ground blind or um, a box blind, you know that those all come with their own difficulties. Like if it's a, if it's a portable pop-up tent style blind, you don't have anywhere to lean your rifle or it's gonna fall over. So now you either have to hold it or lean it on yourself or lay it on the ground where you, if you can set this up in a ground blind, you can you know shorten the legs and you're sitting on your chair or your stool or whatever. You can set this up and have the rifle ready to go and now your hands off where you can be recessed back in the blind, maybe even have the whole rifle still in the blind or only have you know an inch or two sticking out where a traditional box blind you're usually setting it on the window ledge and now you're you're sticking the whole gun out and drawing attention to yourself where if the game's there sometimes they'll see that when you're first trying to get the gun out so whether it's a box blind or a ground blind this can be really handy to kind of have your rifle at the ready or if you don't want it pointed down range or sticking out the window i found this in my own personal use that um, depending on which way this is angled you can just let it let it rest on its own um, I found that when it's turned the other way where that recess is, you can basically get this to rest by itself. So you're not pointed down range and you, or you can have it tilt all the way down depending on which way you have it angled um, and let it rest there. So this has a lot of different applications, whether it's uh, ground blind hunting or being out in the field. We thought it was, uh, it was time to bring this product to market because we know there's a lot of these tripods out there and a lot of people that aren't very, aren't necessarily completely satisfied with how they function. So um, by the time you see this video, these products, this product, the, the DGA adapter kit, 360 ball mount adapter kit is gonna be available for purchase and ready to ship. So um, if you have any questions about it, feel free to give us a call. We can answer any questions you might have, but uh, I think that's all we have for today. Thanks.